combined overall. Let's see how it turns when we go racing. And James Stewart gonna try to sweep past the 29 of Andrew Short, but it's short on the oh. Chevrolet Honda out front early. Ryan Hughes gets sideways. He had a top 10 start. He gets plowed into, he is down. Wow, and you got uh, Millsaps there in the 18 and also the 32 of Tommy Hahn on the Honda Muscle Milk ride right there. These top four are going for it on lap one. And what a great story uh, Tommy Hahn is. You know, he jumped on this bike as a replacement rider earlier this season during the Supercross Championship. His little brother was a replacement rider on the same ride. Stewart tries to go to the inside on short and takes over the lead. So welcome back to Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, James Stewart. Although Andrew Short, who's back in a Honda after riding KTM's last year, has to be happy to have the red bike under him. He got one of his old hole shots there. And we'll see if he can hang with Stewart on lap one. And here comes Millsaps. It's a little bit slippery in there. They put down some water. You got Short trying to go the high line and Millsaps the low line. Short able to double back around Millsaps. They're I trying mean, to figure out the lines here. And, and we did we really think that it was going to be any different with James Stewart coming back to um, American Motocross here. He's fired up, he's focused, he's on a new team. There's a, a lot of positive energy going on right there. But we haven't seen Ryan Dungey, the 2010 yeah. champ, who certainly is one of the favorites coming into this event here for me. Millsap's trying to seal the deal on this pass. He and Short have been side by side for most of this lap. I thought Millsap's had him, but look at Short. Get him back on the Honda. Well, and, and it's key to be out front. You can see how much roost and mud is coming up off the back of Short's bike. Millsaps is getting all that. Now, the, the, the advantage to being out front is you don't go through your tear-offs. You don't have to think about that. And uh, you know, try to find a place to clear your goggles and pull that clear tear-off. So Stewart about to complete lap one. He's going past the mechanics area. Then it is Short, Millsaps, Alessi. And then Metcalf, who is Stewart's teammate on the Yoshimura Suzuki. Here we go, one lap complete. A lot of big hitters up here. Pretty much everyone you'd expect to see up front except for Dungey. And look at Metcalf, makes the move on the inside of Alessi. When they come across the stripe, that first lap, see the top of your screen, that's the running order. Dungey comes across first lap in 10th. So he's got his work cut out for him. And you got Tyler Rattray just behind him. And you got lots of time, though, in these races. You see the countdown clock, 27, 28 at the top of the screen. That's the 30-minute countdown. And when that expires, we'll go another two laps beyond that. Usually 14, 15, 16 lap races in these motos with a two-minute lap time. Uh, I think we've seen a, we've had a sighting of Dungey just behind this group. Looking for him on the orange bike, KTM. There is Han. A couple of Kawasaki riders, Brock Tip going through, and then there was Dungey, and there is Rattray, the 28. That would be the number one machine of Ryan Villapoto's, but Villapoto out for the summer with a torn ACL, and they slapped Rattray's number on there and said, time to move up more 50s. He's a big, strong guy. He's definitely able to handle it. Oh, that looked like, uh, was that Michael Byrne there? Might have been Burn on the uh, BTO Sports Suzuki, making a little mistake. Yeah, but that's uh, also his first race back here uh, after injury. Dungey working over the 25 of Brock Tickle. He's on a Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. That's primarily a 250 class team. They have Tickle out here representing on the big bikes. Dungey going to try to work him on the inside. Yeah, like, oh, I thought he had the pass there, but you see just how muddy Dungey, Dungey was on the front of his bike, his front number plate, and you see uh, Short, who's just a couple clicks off of our leader, Stewart. He stayed nice and clean, and look, Millsap's already starting to get some debris there on the front of his bike. Oh, you can see why he just got showered again by Shorty. Great battle yeah. between these two. I mean, and, and, and literally in this situation, you're zigzagging back and forth, and you're not necessarily going to use the line you want. You're going to try to find a clean line and stay out of the roost. And I'm talking my experiences from back when we rode 252 strokes. OK, these are 454 strokes. Whoa. They throw some serious roost off. Sorry to interrupt there, but behind Metcalf, you saw Alessi make a huge mistake, almost go off the track. So he's lost a little bit of ground. And Jeff, I think the 24, you see that yellow fender of Metcalf, he might be the quickest guy of this group. He is starting to close in on this Millsaps and short battle for second. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Millsaps, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Metcalf, this is his specialty. You come outdoors in the summertime, American motocross, when it's hot and it's muddy and it's nasty, this just seems to be where Metcalf really excels. Well, Metcalf was running solo in the Supercross series, but now has Stewart as a teammate. Do you think that bringing two riders in there 
might allow them to both up their game, a little bit more feedback, double the information. Does well, that help? I mean, it's interesting because it's Stewart, and we know that there's a lot, a lot of things that come along with James Stewart. You know, it could be a positive, right? And it could be where the team, everyone's kind of battling each other and chasing each other. At times, it can be a distraction, too. I mean, James Stewart made the team from, uh, his teammate was Davey Millsaps right there, 18. Right. And mid-season makes a change from the Gibbs Yamaha to the Yoshimura Suzuki. And that's unprecedented. And so uh, hopefully for Suzuki, it's the right move for them. And uh, there's a lot of positive energy going on. And everyone's working together and working forward. It certainly moving looks forward. positive right now. It's Stewart in the lead at Metcalf fourth, but closing quickly on the riders battling for the top three. It's Short, Millsaps, Metcalf now all in the same picture. The big triple jump here. Yeah, I mean, Stewart is two seconds a lap faster than Short and Millsaps and Metcalf right now. And it's uh, Millsaps around the outside and finally able to make the move on Short. Short going to try to come back, though. And the battle continues. He's got it. Third or fourth time these guys have gone back and forth. I thought Millsaps finally was going to make it stick. Ah, Shorty's been at this game a while. He knows how to come back on you, and he does it. Take second place back. Well, you know, Jason, these are three of the guys that we know work hard. Um, yep. They've always been dedicated to their program, and uh, they. now that we're getting to these 30 minutes, plus two lap motos, we're going to do it twice, roughly 70 minutes of racing for each class here today. You got to be fit. You got to be strong. 23 minutes and 24 seconds in this moto left, and then we'll go two laps beyond that. So we're not even near the halfway point. Got a great battle here, and then right behind them, you have Alessi, Tommy Hahn, and then Dungey up to seventh ahead of Josh Grant on the 33, who's in eighth. Yeah, and, and talking about all that training and hard work, and there's a lot of it, a lot of the success on race day has to do with how you mentally manage the race, you manage your emotions, you manage your energy. One thing that I was always, I always try to build into my riding technique is to be efficient. Looking at the 29 here, Chaparral Honda, Andrew Short, he's a rider that's very efficient. When I mean that, he doesn't move around on the bike a lot. He's not crazy, hanging off the back, having to pull himself back up on the front. Okay, he's very still on the bike, he's very quiet. Therefore, he doesn't use a lot of energy. So technically, you might not have to be in that in as good a shape, or if you are, you're managing your energy well, so you have it at the end of each motor. I'll tell you who has it right now, the 24 Metcalf. He has caught Millsap, so now we're looking at a battle for third instead of a battle for second. Ah, oh, oh, there's Rhino. Second time, he's down. That's a bummer there for Hugh. You see the four came on the back of the pants, uh, dedicating this one to uh, Jeremy McGrath's wife, uh, Kim McGrath. Uh, they've been struggling there, and uh, good to see Rhino and really the whole industry getting together to support them. Hopefully, better luck for Rhino. Maybe in the second moto today, this one has not gone the way he hoped. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked earlier briefly when he was going out for practice. He was like so excited, and I'm like, dude, just keep it on two wheels, man. Just go out there, you know, <laughs> be safe, okay? 39 years old, you can't afford to be out there hitting the mat, but so far, Moto hasn't gone his way. Wow. Okay, for once, it does pay to listen for, to Jeff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it always good pays to good listen advice. To, to me, okay? <laughs> uh, Dungey is seventh, then you're looking at Grant. Vince Freeze uh, is ninth, and Tickle, as we saw earlier, the number 25 rounds out the top 10. Here is your leader, James Stewart. The guy never left. Looks pretty good right now. <laughs> In 08, when he raced the series, he didn't only win the title, he won every single moto, including both of them here at Hangtown. He's won this race a couple of times, and he's off to a fantastic start on the Yoshimura Suzuki. And uh, the fans, they were excited watching him in practice. He was lighting it up like you expect James Stewart to do, and they're pumped to see him out front right now as well. A little change in the running order here. Brent Metcalf has made the move on Davey Millsaps for a third. There's Metcalf on the 24. He's now going after the 29 of short. Here is how it happened. We'll give you a replay of a pass. Happened about a lap ago, Jeff. Yeah, watch. He gets to the right side of him, and you say, okay, Mills or, uh, yeah, Millsaps going to kind of block that inside. Metcalf says, okay, you're, you're not going to drive me wide. I'll just go ahead and stay on the throttle around the outside. Metcalf is hammering right now. He is really confident. He's looking great. Lap time uh, last time around was a 207.1. And I believe that was the fastest lap over anyone else in the field. Yeah, a couple tenths quicker than Stewart and Short, who are right ahead of him. Let's go a little bit further back. You've got Alessi at the number five spot. Dungey in sixth is all over him right now. 
and going to try to make the pass. He's on the outside, long way around, but it'll lead to the inside in the next corner of the right-hander, and that might pay off. Pulls a tear off right there, not expecting Alessi to retaliate at this point. So uh, we'll see. You know, they put down a lot of water uh, on, the, on the track. You see Alessi just make big bobble right there. The track's pretty tough right now. Let's go down to the pitch with Kelly, who has an update on Tyler Rattray. Kelly. And a disappointing day for Tyler Rattray. He came into this mechanics area holding his left hand. He took his glove off. They looked it over. Obviously, he was, he was bothered by his left hand. When I had talked to him just before the start of the race, he said all he wanted to do today was really get through the race safely and clean. He said it's a long season. My expectations are just to get through race one, moto one. Uh, but his day cut short with apparently a left hand injury. Wow. Well, that's interesting because you know that Rattray is one of those guys, usually his strength is consistency. So that's going to be a big blow for him if he doesn't score any points in this moto. Look at this. Metcalf has now gotten around short. So we've got Suzuki's running 1-2. What would you say about the positive vibe yep. over there? Yep. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, Suzuki's made two great choices. They, you know, you got Stewart who has had an undefeated season. Only Ricky Carmichael has been able only you know, other than James. Yep. And uh, Metcalf, who especially the last couple of seasons has been so spectacular in this championship. So a couple of good choices paying off right now. And uh, I think for Suzuki, uh, one of the biggest things is the fact that Dungey got such a bad start because I do believe that Dungey, by the end of this moto, uh, he's going to close up on these guys. Right now, he's running a 206.7. Uh, our leaders were at a 206, short Millsaps off the pace a couple seconds after that. But Dungey's really, he's 14 seconds off the lead right now, and that's with a horrible start. And only about four seconds, though, is Dungey behind Millsaps there in the 18. And you're starting to see glimpses of Dungey in the back, some of these longer sections of the track. He just might be able to get up there and challenge these riders by the time it's over. Look at the clock at the top of the screen, folks. We're not even halfway through this 30-minute plus two-lap moto. And there's about one thing you don't expect to change out here. Wherever short goes, Millsaps is going to be right there with him. They have been battling this whole way. Yeah, and Metcalf came through. He's starting to gap himself a little bit. And I suspect soon they're going to have company by Ryan Dungey. Ryan Dungey, he's the fine wine of motocross. He just gets better with time. And earlier today in first qualifying practice, which is where the fastest times came from, Dungey was way off the pace you know, about 10th or so. The second qualifying practice, uh, times were higher, but yet Dungey was close to the lead. And now as the race goes on, the track gets rougher. Dungey just seems to get better and he gets faster and stronger. That has always been his uh, trademark. Even there when he go. won this title, here's Dungey in 2010. There were a lot of days where in practice or even the first moto, it looked like someone would have his number. And then the, later in the day, he would and up do the end around and pass them back. Yeah, here he is right here. And this is, uh, this is Dungey's first year with Red Bull KTM. In Europe, in the World Championship, World Motocross Championship, this team, one of the premier teams, KTM, World Champions in the 250, the 450, they really have got it together. Now this year, the effort that they've put together with Roger DeCoster, they got Ken Roxon, Marvin Muscan riding the 250s, former World Champions, and of course, Dungey. He was the pick for this 450, and I think you're gonna see this bike and this team uh, really put in some great results because the foundation for motocross and the World Championship, they're bringing it over here. So uh, they're expecting big things out of Ryan Dungey in this 450. Millsap still putting the heat on short. He's gonna try to go to the inside just a bit. Show uh, short the front wheel. Let him know he's still back there. Now he's gonna go around the outside. Slams the door. Short has been riding one heck of a wide Honda in this moto. Every time you think that Millsaps has room, Short finds a way to cut him off. Here we go again. Oh, this is gonna, oh, little mistake there by Millsaps. He plowed into the berm. Millsaps gonna get fed up with this here. I, I got a feeling these bikes are gonna have a little red and blue on each one of them by the time we're done here. And somehow with all this battling, they're actually sticking with Metcalf. A lot of times the riders will slow each other oh, down. There, it is. there he goes, makes the move. That took. 17 minutes from to finally execute the pass. Let's see if Short can get it back again. Well, and see what's happened is that gap. When we were in the same section one lap ago, Metcalf had about another two seconds on these guys. They've reeled them in. It'd be interesting to see these lap time and times because uh, Stewart should be crossing the start finish line about right now. If he has, yeah, he should have already gone by. That's a 206.4. And uh, we'll take a look here. Millsaps, he comes by with the 208. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 207, so he picked it up. And it looks like Stewart 
had a little quicker that time. It's gonna gap Denji, who was about 13 seconds off. Now he's about 15. Back in fifth. We'll see if Short can respond now that he's the pursuer to uh, Millsaps. Take us through this pass here, how Davey finally got that thing done. Well, it's persistence. He just keeps on it. So he's, they've been riding outsides the inside and watch Millsaps right here. He says, okay, this berm is looking good right now. It's starting to come together. Short gets a little bump right on the inside and Millsaps carries the speed around. Here's Stewart with a 9.9 .9 second lead over his teammate Metcalf right now. And uh, with everything that's happened with Stewart the last few years, not only did he not race this entire series since 2008, but um, since 2009, he was a Supercross champ. He struggled a bit indoors as well. Still, there's never a doubt of his speed, his talent. Just for whatever reason, all the pieces weren't coming together. But in any given moment, he could still be the fastest fan on the track. So even yeah. though he hasn't raced in a while, I don't know if people are shocked to see him leading like this. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, James is always fast. It, it, it's whether or not he's going to make the big mistake. You know, that's that's the MO. You look at it in the last, well, however many years he's been pro, uh, close to 10 years now, I believe. So the guy's got the speed. I can tell you that. This guy can ride a motorcycle fast. And no mistake so far. He has been flawless throughout the afternoon here at Hangtown. But it's still early. But the number seven so far enjoying a very happy return to Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Ryan Dungey has battled his way all the way back from about 10th early to now fourth. Made a pass on Andrew Short. Jeff, take us through this one. Went, as it went to break, he made this move. Yeah, he comes up this section of rollers right here and just stays on top. It keeps a lot of momentum. Short leaves the inside open, and Dungey takes him pretty high right there and makes a stick. Triple down the hill. He's hammering right now. Dungey is on the move. 16 seconds off the lead. Set a 208 last time around. And you folks can look at the clock at the top of the screen. Eight minutes before we will throw out the two lap board. And they're doing lap times a little over two minutes. So we're probably thinking somewhere around four or five laps or so left in this race. So if you're Millsaps in third, and you only have a small gap over the number five of Dungey, you know you're going to have a battle on your hands with him before this one is over. Brown Stewart's teammate, Brett Metcalf, yellow bike right in front right there. He's got him in his sights. And I can tell you. Coming down that hill, Dungey got a little kick with the rear end, got out of control, but he still nailed the inside line that he wanted. Dungey's really, most of the time, he's pretty smooth. And what I love about his technique is how still and centered his shoulders and head and everything is on the top of the bike. He doesn't get his shoulders off to the side. He doesn't get out of balance a lot. Uh, and for him to have those little, uh, that back of the bike, kind of swapping back and forth. That lets me know that he's riding at KTM pretty hard right now. And here's James Stewart, who has led, uh, battled a bit with Short on the first lap, but basically he has led every inch of this race and just continues to extend it. 11.6 seconds as the lead for Stewart, who has not raced this tour full time since 2008. That is a long layoff. And for most riders, it would probably take some time uh, to get your legs back underneath you to get your speed back, but James Stewart, he always carries speed in his gear bag, and uh, it's as if he has uh, been riding this bike for a long time, and it's as if he had never left this series. He is on fire right now. And I'd imagine, Jeff, probably able to save a little bit of energy, not having to battle anyone down the stretch. Those other riders are really pushing each other. Yeah, Stewart's out to 13-second lead right now. And I would be really happy with the 13-second lead. And right. one thing... Part of my career, one thing that I would always focus on, especially in these first motos like this, if you're out front, is managing your energy and saving something for the second moto, and I think Stewart's gonna need it. Yeah, now see, meanwhile, these guys, they're not saving anything, they are going at it. You've got Alessi in six of the 800, and the green bike is to 25 of Brock Tickle, trying to get by him for that spot. Alessi doing the old look back again. When he starts to go backwards, man, he, he really starts to, uh, Looking around, moving around different lines. But I tell you, Tickle, he is fired up right now. Woo. And I'm pretty impressed with Tickle. It was the final qualifying uh, practice here today. I thought Tickle looked exceptional and maybe better than what I expected him to. Right there, puts the move on Alessi. So that is sixth now for Tickle in his first ever uh, 450 motocross race. Did ride the big bike there in Supercross. I don't think he got the results he was quite hoping for. Just said you move up to that big class, it was really hard mentally to just kind of relax and, and, and loosen up. 
Doesn't seem to have that problem today. Yeah, and how about it? You got Mitch Payton, his Mitch and Bones, their Pro Circuit Monster Energy Kawasaki rider is the top Kawasaki rider That's right, right now. So, uh, and uh, let's go a little further back here. Uh, Metcalf second. We saw Stewart earlier. There is Metcalf. And it looks like Millsaps has actually caught Metcalf for second. And Dungey is right there with him. So three riders battling for second, third, fourth. And still a lot of time left in this race. And you know what this ride by Dungey here, what it reminds me of? Back Mike LaRocco. If he got a bad start, the guy would just be hammering through the pack. He was so good at that, and now he'll, you know, obviously he manages the guy go on the team. 250 guys be coming up next. But I tell you, Dungy is just relentless right now, and he looks strong. The bike looks good, and he is definitely getting the power to the ground. Well, because of Dungy's reputation for, for being in such great shape, uh, can the other riders sense that? When you look back and realize that's who it is behind you late in the moto, does that play with your mind a little bit and say, oh, this guy, he does not get tired. Yeah, He's probably you know, only going to get stronger. You know, it, these guys are at the top level. They've raced together numerous times. You know the personalities. You know the tendencies that the, that the rider has. Uh, and when you have a guy like Dungey, who is self-trained, by the way. He doesn't have one of the premier rock star trainers that are out there in the world. <laughs> this guy does it himself. You know, look at Millsaps going to the inside. Maybe the best way to avoid Dungey nice. is to go past Metcalf, and he does. Now Metcalf going to try to fight back. Wheel to wheel on these uphill whoops, and Millsaps has the pass made. See, Weez, I never have liked the outside lines. I, you'd be hard pressed to find a replay of me taking it outside somewhere. I like the insides. We talked about we're walking the track practice today. And I was watching some of these riders going, where are they going? They're so far outside here. And what Metcalf is doing is trying to find a smooth line to gain the momentum, carry his speed. But right now, the short line is working. Ride those insides, ride it tight, get through these lines clean right here. Let's see what Dungey now can do with uh, Metcalf. And look at the difference that has made where Dungey was right behind Millsaps. Look at the gap Millsaps has on Dungey now that he has made that pass. That might save Dungey. Uh, he could have gone all the way back to fourth. Instead, he's got a shot at finishing second. Time's running out for Ryan Dungey right here. I'm really impressed with Millsaps and the ride he's putting on. I'm, I'm impressed with Metcalf and what he's doing right now. And uh, we've only got, what, two and a half minutes plus two laps. We'll see where they come across the stripe. It's probably going to be 34, 35 minute race here. Oh, Dungey's right there with the 24 of Metcalf right now. Metcalf veteran uh, out of Australia. We mentioned uh, Millsaps and his wife, Brittany, are expecting their first child uh, in almost any day now. But uh, Metcalf and his wife, Sheena, also expecting their first child beginning of August. Uh, yeah, good to see the like family that. atmosphere here at the races. Sheena's yeah. here this weekend. I think this is the last race she's going to be able to go to. Baby showers happening all over yeah. the place. Kids <laughs> running around. <laughs> That's well, always, it's a beautiful thing. It's been a family it. sport. Uh, Dungey, who was Metcalf's teammate last year on the Suzuki's, is now challenging him for third. And that position is big. Finish on the podium. Top three in motocross. You get to go. Thank the sponsors. Talk about your race in front of the fans. If you get fourth, you just ride it back to the pits. So there's some motivation between these two to lock down that third place spot. And Millsaps, how about him pouring it on late, getting away from these two. Great ride for him as Stewart continues to lead down the stretch at Hangtown. Welcome back to Hangtown and the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship. Ryan Dungey here. That's the number five. Trust us underneath all that mud. There, there it is. is. <laughs> He's made another move. Got around Brett Metcalf. Take us through it, Jeff. Watch right here. He set this up in the corner before. Metcalf goes wide, trying to find this smooth line. And Dungey really accelerates hard. Made a full commitment. Makes the pass stick. That's good enough for third. Got to get up to second right now. And he's uh, about three seconds between himself and Millsap, so that number two spot with what we think will be three laps to go. So not much time. Looks like uh, Jason Thomas there on the BTO bike. Getting put a lap down by our leaders. But I've been really impressed here. Out of our screen is Davey Millsaps. He's turned it up. He started to look like he had a fade going on there in the middle of the race, and he has totally hammered it. And that tells me that his training is there, his confidence is there. Kelly spoke earlier today about his comments about 
Well, you know, it's it's just a different type of momentum that he didn't really think he'd carry any from Supercross Championship and Motocross Championship. I feel the opposite. I feel that Millsaps has got the ultimate confidence right now. And uh, credit out to his uh, trainer, Pablo, real fun guy who actually um, runs a, uh, a gym in Manhattan, but still comes to the races uh, with Davey and does a motocross thing on the side. Uh, Millsaps lost a lot of weight this year, probably in the best shape we've ever seen him in, and he's ridden very well. And um, if it weren't for this guy, we'd probably be talking about Millsaps winning the race. But James Stewart has been in a league of his own throughout this one. He's led every lap. His lead is eight and a half seconds over Millsaps right now with two to go. Well, James has got the freedom to explore some lines and, and uh, get out there and stay pretty clean. I mean, look, he's got Roost on the front of him, and he's led the whole race. That's just from the lappers. <laughs> These guys that have been battling in those top five positions, they have really been taking on the mud and rock and rice hole. But Stewart had the fastest lap. He turned a 2.04. Last time around, he was a 2.09, so five seconds to lap off. But these riders in second and third here, uh, Millsaps and Dungey, are not that far off the pace. And I got to note, Dungey, he's 13 seconds off the lead. At one point, he was more than uh, 20 seconds after the start. Yeah, he's definitely put in a hard charge. And now you see Dungey in third, uh, no longer dealing with the pressure from either Metcalf or Short. He has been able to shake those two. That's fourth and fifth. Tickles sixth, Alessi seventh, Tommy Hahn eighth, Grant and Jake Weimer rounding out the top 10. There is Metcalf putting uh, Jason Thomas a lap down. A good run for Metcalf fourth, but at one point he was in second. And uh, Millsaps and Dungeon just found another gear here late in this one. We yeah, have, there's another left rider there. That's the six, six, two, was it? Tell them they're totally covered, and um, we'll get you the uh, the name on that one in, in just a minute. That's Dusty Pipes on the 652, One of the best names in the sport. <laughs> Dusty Pipes, man. Uh, there is Short, and uh, we were talking about this uh, early in the moto. Last time he rode this Honda 450 was in 2010, and he got about half of the whole shots. I think 11 out of 24 motos he pulled the whole shot, and uh, battled with Stewart across the line in this one. Got his customary good start on that bike. And for the first half of this race, looks strong. Looks like he might uh, pull up a runner-up ride, but second half, things have changed. Something's changed here for a yeah. tickle. Side panel coming off. That rear number plate there, and that uh, protects the exhaust system from me. You notice how it's silver there. It's got some of that material that probably NASA developed to reflect the heat. There on the inside of it, that right leg, when he has to lean back on the bikes, can get a little warm. It's the last lap, but James Stewart is leading it. Can you script a better return to Hangtown than this? Not only uh, fastest in qualifying in both sessions, and not only winning this first moto, but doing it in dominant fashion. And uh, when James was winning titles in this 450 class, or even when he was in the smaller uh, 125 class, which they now call the 250 division, he always said he didn't like getting dirty. He wanted to get the lead as quickly as possible, I agree. avoid the roost. You like that strategy? You stay clean. Do you know how much better you look in photos when you lead the whole race? I like yours yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, exactly. That's what the sponsors want. Last time you won, a race was the finale. Last in motocross was the finale of this tour at Steel City in 2008. And that completed a perfect season where he won all 24 motos. Now, James has said in pretty much every interview he has done, since switching to the Suzuki team, that the 24-0 type of season is not his goal. He's just trying to get back into it, just trying to have a good time, soak up the good vibes. Yeah, but the I more he wins, the more people are going to ask yeah, it's, about that. It's easy to say that going in. He switched teams. He hasn't rode this championship for a while. But let's say we get two races down the road and he's won four. It's going to be in the back of his mind because He's had one uh, undefeated season. Ricky Carmichael had two. Those guys have gone after the record books, each one of them. Okay, right. so Carmichael's got him one upped on that one. Well, so far, the decision to switch bikes and return to Lucas Oil Pro Motocross has been a good one. Welcome back, James Stewart. He wins his first moto back in the series and his first race ever on a Suzuki. That's Lee McCollum. He's a mechanic over there. He's happy. Yeah. They sprung him back into work. Leroy, get down here with the wrenches. Worked for James, and it worked. For oh. sure, they got themselves a win. The pressure is on, Leroy. Yeah, he's That's... been uh, helping some of the other riders on the team. He hasn't been a direct mechanic uh, for any of the riders this year since they only had Metcalf, but uh, he shows he still knows how to tune a bike. 
He's 1-0 so far. Yeah, all right, so Stewart has the win. James Stewart making his return to motocross in grand fashion with a victory. James, if you're suffering from growing pains, it certainly didn't show out there. How does it feel back? How does it feel to be back here in motocross? Oh, it feels good. I mean, uh, just started off like that. It's obviously unbelievable. You know, honestly, I didn't really expect it. Just got out and uh, we we're a little tight in the beginning, but, uh, you know, kind of just settled in the rhythm. I was pulling away. And I was staying the same for a while, and then uh, it was good. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Yoshimura Suzuki was working so good out there. So um, you know, I'm excited about the second moto. Uh, go back and regroup and see what we can do. What do you take from moto one into moto two later today? I don't know. Uh, I'm not. It was it was pretty good. <laughs> you know, it was pretty good. You know, I think I'd be a little bit more relaxed at second moto. Uh, you know, as the race went on, I felt better and better. Uh, but it's hard. You know, I got up front. I pulled away. So... If I can do that, you know, I'll be happy. But the track's going to be gnarly, the second moto, for sure. So, uh, you know, I just want to give it out to Yoshimura Suzuki, Red Bull, Answer, Nike, Oakley, uh, Bell Helmets, uh, GoPro, everybody's out there. So uh, thank you, fans out there. Uh, pretty good way to start it off. All right, congratulations. The all-new Geomax MX-34 is the latest result of Dunlop's ongoing development. With the help of top motocross pros, the all-new Geomax MX-34 is the new industry standard for soft to intermediate terrain. Experience the advantage 